This picture was taken two and a half years ago. The baby in the picture is our son, Declan. Declan's not breathing. I'm not breathing. If I were to name this picture, I would name it Broken Heart. Full term and perfectly formed. Declan had a heartbeat and then he didn't. And when he died, my innocent world died with him. Children aren't supposed to die before their parents. There's an unwritten cosmic order to death. And this picture captures the innocence lost of two young parents who believed in the power of positive thinking and the perfect unfolding of life. The long months following Declan's death, I came to know the very worst part of myself, the self that returned home from the hospital, breast full of milk, ready to feed a baby left behind. The wailing in the fetal position self that judged the pregnant, smoking teenager. The victim self who refused to get out of bed to buy groceries because getting out of bed meant going alone without a baby. The angry self who told a friend, I don't really care if you don't like seeing me like this. <laughs> it's not about you. My cup was completely empty. There was absolutely no overflow to share with anyone else. Around the same time, I formed an intimate, but rather unpredictable relationship with grief. My constant companion, grief was fully six feet tall with a football player build. I shared a bed with grief. <laughs> he'd climb in between my husband and I every night, and he'd be there in the morning. He followed me throughout the day, sort of like a shadow, and would tackle me at random, leaving me bruised and battered, and wondering if I'd ever feel joy again. Six months after Declan died, I received an email with a photo attachment from an aunt detailing the cunning nature of Paget's disease. Paget's disease is a rare form of breast cancer that's often going undetected because it hides beneath the areola of the breast. And I had been concerned about um, a sesame seed size growth on my breast during my pregnancy with Declan. It almost looked like a skin tag, but I had written it off as sort of the changes to pregnancy. But when I opened the attachment that came along with that email, <laughs> I knew I had it. The blood rushed from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, and um, off to the doctor I went. I actually walked into my doctor's office and told her that I had Paget's disease, carrying an email. And uh, she tried to convince me that um, because my world had been turned upside down with the death of Declan, that I was absolutely fine. I insisted on a mammogram. The mammogram results came back highly suspicious of malignancy. And so I had a biopsy done. The biopsy um, ended up showing that I had a condition called ductal carcinoma in situ. And so I had a mastectomy. I, ha I wasn't devastated um, after I had received this um, information um, because I felt oddly empowered. I, the, the doctors that ended up telling me that, that I had Paget's disease after my surgery from my mastectomy, it left me feeling like if I listen to myself from here on in, I'll be quite safe. You often read about people who get sort of a tab on, on the shoulder when the universe is trying to get their attention to teach them a lesson. And, and if they don't get the little tap on the shoulder, then they get a nudge. And if they um, aren't getting the lesson from the nudge, then they get a full-on push. Well, I feel like I got the cosmic two by four to the back of the head. <laughs> Not only did I have uh, the lesson from, from Declan dying, I also had the loss of a breast in the span of six months. Ironically, the lesson that I needed to get from Declan's death was the forced examination of my life. I understand logically that every moment, every experience that we have adds up to the one that we're in. And in that way, we just build upon it. There's nothing to regret. There's nothing that's destroyed. All of these moments lead. But in my case, I felt like I had nothing left to build upon, that my very, self of, my very sense of self, what I had carefully crafted and come to know as me, had fully dissolved. There really only were bits and pieces left. So for me, the process of reinvention required that I get down on all fours 
and sort through the scattered puzzle pieces of my life. And I needed to look at what represented my belief system now that these events had occurred. I had to re-examine all the odd shapes and decide which still fit with my life philosophy. Did I still believe everything was possible with hard work and persistence? Did I still believe that there were no coincidences in life? Did I still believe that everything unfolds the way it's supposed to? I had always believed that if you're not growing, you're slowly dying. And in the past, I had taken on a challenge. Every four years or so, I had experienced the joy of helping entrepreneurs start and grow companies. I had dabbled in property development. And I had even promoted a world-ranked boxer sitting ringside with him in Las Vegas for his world title fight. I had walked directly through fear. And I had calmed the internal negative chatter that happens in all of our brains. And I had even closely examined the, the manner in which we look at possibility and how it's, how it's manifested in the theater of the mind before it, it ends up out in reality. So when I slid the fitted puzzle pieces of my new life puzzle back together, what came to be a clear picture for me was that we're never in control of the cards we're dealt, only the manner in which we play them. We can never control the external events that are happening to us, but we can certainly respond to what's going on around us. My reinvention required a surrender of sorts that I simply allow. To not kick and scream against the reality of what was, there was no way I could bring Declan back, and there was no way I was going to be able to change the reality of my, my health situation. But what I did learn is that if I allowed the natural unfolding, instead of trying to fight against it, almost like floating on a current, then um, there was a sense of, of, of happiness, actually. Reinvention like fear is fully an inside job. People fear change. Um, so the process of reinvention can be nothing short of terrifying. It tugs and it pulls and it is chaos. It requires a belief that solid ground is there and then it dissolves when we take a step. We feel our way blindly into the next space in the hopes that we will have the promise of a future. It's human nature to expect a future and this is why we so often live there instead of the present. When I look back in hindsight of the grief that I had over Declan, what I was grieving was a future that I wouldn't see him walk across the stage for graduation or get married. But the reality is we're only gifted today, the absolute moment that we're in. And when I began to accept that, that's when I actually started to live again. I became present and I became full of gratitude. The reinvented me understands the power of now. The five year, six month, four week plans, they mean nothing to me anymore. In only having today, I actually give myself permission to not have a plan, to step up into the unknown, create on the fly, to allow myself to suit up in a uniform, get on a playing field, and not even know the position that I'm playing, to have the courage to run with wild abandon toward a dream and trust that things will unfold the way they're supposed to, to reinvent often and on a whim. Having come full circle in questioning all of life, I believe now more than ever that it's essential that we live our lives to the fullest with all the passion we can muster. There is absolutely no re room for mediocrity. There just isn't time. There's no time for that. Heartbreaking losses, as I continue to explain to our children, go hand in hand with living a passionate life without fear. A loss in business or your health or your personal life will always be temporary. It may not feel like it, but it will pass. And when it does, I suggest to everybody in this room that you decide wisely what you will do with that loss. My sincerest wish is that you two will reinvent, reposition, rephrase the events that occur in your life and shift your perspective. Just do a shift and create something beautiful that contributes to the world. Deciding how you will gift your unique strengths and talents and your genius is all that you must do. And when you do it, do it with excellence. Thank you.